Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my favorite palettes from 2021. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I am a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup with a soft spot for indie makeup and colorful makeup, which you will definitely see here today. And I have new content every week, so I'd love to have you subscribe. So I'm filming this immediately after filming my other favorites. I just figured it would be too long, so I'm splitting it in two. I'm glad I did. I also filmed this look, so you'll be seeing this look a bunch of times, but short on time, lots of things I want to do, so here we go. Um, plus, filming back-to-back -back favorites makes sense. Um, so everything that I grabbed was released in 2021. I do have some favorites that I tried this year that I love so much, but they weren't released this year. So I'm not counting them. Like Natasha Denona Metropolis, I finally got that this fall, and it is one of my favorite palettes of all time now, but it, it's from a couple years ago. Oh, this uh, is just stuff that was released in 2021. I tried to make sure I looked and saw at least January for these. So looking at my little pile here, it is almost exclusively indie brands and fairly colorful. So let's go into this. Um, the first thing I want to show is actually the first thing that I got at the beginning of the year, and that is the Odin's Eye Norns palette. So I really wish I would have bought the whole collection, all four palettes, but I only got the big one. And this is beautiful. So I got this in January, and this, I'd been wanting to try Odin's Eye all of last year, and then I finally took the plunge with this, and I regret nothing. They are one of my favorite brands now. Um, this is a beautiful palette. I've mentioned it on this channel multiple times. Uh, I love the jewel tones. I love the darkness of it. I love these shimmers so much. Uh, this is just a beautiful palette and I'm so happy I have it in my collection. And I think it is one of their best palettes. I mean, I've only tried like four, but it is one of the best palettes that came out. Uh, this year for me for sure. So seeing with those inside, that was the first thing I got in 2021 and this is the last thing I've gotten in 2021 and that is the the legendary Diversa collection. So I actually posted a video playing with these last week and before the chaos of this weekend and I've used it since. I've used each of them since and they are beautiful. I love them and I am so happy I finally got them. So the mattes in this, I think these are even better than the Norns, but like, not like heaps above. Like, I think they just keep getting better, basically. Uh, this is the Judy palette. This one is still available. Uh, last I checked, and I will link everything below. Um, I wore this the other day, uh, again, using Serene, Yin, and then I think I did Overheat and Luna or something on the lid. I know I used Luna, the multi-chrome and then I used a little bit of solar flare on the inner corner. Beautiful. The mattes work effortlessly. Like, tap in, rub it on, it's done. Put the other one on, blends in perfectly. Like, one of the most effortless formulas I've tried. Um, and then the Hummingbird palette from them is also still available. I used the Fancy multi the other day, and it is gorgeous. I, I just, it's so pretty. Um, I know some people said that the hibiscus shade stains. I didn't have any problems staining. Um, I need to use this one more. It's just not the colors I'm going for at the moment. Uh, but in the spring and summer, I will use this a lot. The last but certainly not least is the Giant Wolves palette from Annette. I adore this. I'm sad that this is sold out. I'm really proud of all three of these creators for coming up with these. Um, this is just so beautiful. This is what I want to reach for right now. Um, I used Antipode the other day for a quick look. Uh, it was Flare. I used a couple, I used these two in that first video that I'll link. Um, I need to use the blue still. Blues are my favorite color. I just haven't had as much time lately as I wanted to, but I do have to include it because even though I haven't used every shade in those last two, or every shade in all of them, uh, they're definitely amazing, and even if one of the other shades was a dud, they would still be amazing and worth it, so I had to include these. 
Okay, and then one of my other favorite brands came out with a few things this year, uh, but two of them really stand out, and that is Lethal Cosmetics, and that is the Lethal is Dead palette with Teresa is Dead, and their new Berlin 89 palette. So this is sadly no longer available. I do have a video swatching all of my Lethal shades, uh, and a few of these, they're not identical, but a few of these I have similar enough shades in other Lethal shadows, like this one, and I don't remember exactly, I think this one, um, maybe this one too, where they're similar enough that if you couldn't get this, you can get a similar vibe with another shade. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. I also have all of the shades listed and timestamps and everything. Like I tried to be very thorough, but I'm super proud of Teresa is Dead for this color story, for getting to work with Lethal. It, they're such an amazing brand. I love them so much. And this is just a beautiful color story. I love this so much. Um, so happy I got this. I was on a trip and I was on vacation in LA when this launched. I had an alarm set and in the middle of like hanging out with our friend that we were singing with, I was like, just a minute, I have to go buy makeup <laughs> and ordered this. And I, I, it's so good. Um, it's actually, my best friend got it too. And it's her first lethal purchase. She tried a couple of my shadows before and had some singles and she, it's probably, I think her most used palette now. Um, and then the other one that I really love from them this year is the Berlin 89. I love the vibe of this and the color story is just so good. I think the mattes in this might even be better than the normal. Like they just seem to build better. I don't know if they're just making improvements, but they're beautiful. The color selection in this is amazing. It's got their first multi-chrome. They did launch more multi-chromes recently that are full size. These are all kind of small. Um, so that they're this big. I didn't buy any of them just because they launched on Black Friday and I already had my shopping list for Black Friday and my budget and I just didn't need to rush on those. Um, but I do want them very, very badly and we'll be getting them eventually um, because this is beautiful and I love everything else they do. My goal is to have all of their shades at some point. Um, I do have a video using this. I've used it outside of that video multiple times Everything is great in here. You can go neutral, you can add up neutral to pop, you can do warm, you can do blue and purple. There's so many options here. I know some people said that this was like a challenging color story. I didn't find it to be at all. Um, I just found it beautiful. Uh, so definitely, definitely recommend. Um, if the color story speaks to you. Okay, and then I'm gonna mention three palettes here as one. Um, this is the Sydney Grace and Teptalia collection. So these came out early fall, I believe. I don't remember exactly um, when these came out, but they are beautiful. I think some people were disappointed because there's so much hype, so much hype, so much hype. Keep talking about it, keep talking about it. Released all of most of the shades ahead of time. So people got like annoyed. I didn't find annoying. I liked it. But um, then when it launched, there were three palettes and light and dark for each and it confused people and I don't know but I didn't find it confusing and I have two of them in dark and two, one of them in light and I think these are great quality I didn't use them a lot when they first came out I used tried them out but the colors speak to me more now I, I knew I would want them more in like the winter um but they're just beautiful this is the quintessence palette this one I have in dark because these looked a little too ashy in the light version for me this Boreal shade is beautiful. Um, I really like the tones here. Each one of these has like greens, purples, and like some kind of reddy burgundy shades, but they're all very different from each other. But I think that also confused people, the fact that there was like the same color in each, but like very different versions of those colors. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this Aurora shade is a really beautiful blue purple duochrome. The mattes in this are the Sydney Grace mattes. They're pigmented, blend really well. They're lovely to use. The shimmers are really beautiful. There's different textures. Some of them are a little flakier and sparklier than others. Some are a little more satin. Um, they're just lovely to work with. This one feels a little more folly to me. This is on the horizon. This is the one I got in light, I believe. Yeah, this is the one I got in light. Um, this green shade is really great. It's just a nice grass green. This earthbound shimmer is really beautiful. I've used 
these shimmers multiple times. Um, they're just beautiful. I, this blue, I, I just, I really love these. Um, and I'm really, really proud of Christine of Pimtalia for curating these. And then this is the last one. This is the jewel toned one. These blues are beautiful, especially blended together. It just made like a perfect gradient. And I got a lot of compliments that day on my look. Um, but I really love these. I definitely like these. I like the Enduring Love palette from Sydney Grace, but I like the, these more. I just, I go with color more than neutrals. So I really am happy that I have these colorful shades in the Sydney Grace formula. Um, and they're very sleek and very pretty. <sighs> and I really appreciate that there were options. And then the whole light versus deep thing that Sydney Grace does, I think more brands need to do. So I think it's good to talk about it because I think that is something that more brands should do. Because it's really hard sometimes to have a palette that has shades that'll work for someone really fair skinned and for someone with really deep skin and having the option to pick one or the other and having the transition shades switch so that they work for you is just a brilliant idea that's, yeah, it's more effort, but I don't think it's that much more effort. So, and I think it's worth the effort to show that you're thinking about inclusion. So I, I really love that. I'm gonna mention, this is one of the few brands that's not really an indie brand and that is Natasha Denona. So she came out with three big palettes and some minis this year. I don't have any of the minis. I do want quite a few of them. Um, they're cute. I just haven't bought them yet, but I don't have retro yet. I really, really, really want retro and I'm hoping I get it for Christmas. If I don't, I have, maybe I'll get a gift card or something and I can get it. But uh, I have Zendo and Circo Loco that came out this year and Circo Loco, I really wanted when it came out, but I didn't, I couldn't justify $129 for it. So I got it during Black Friday for half off and it is wonderful. Um, she did say that she made it a big palette because it's limited edition so that you had more product to last you longer and you didn't have to worry about using up a small pan. Um, most people aren't really gonna use it up, so. But it's, it's beautiful. I know a lot of people found this color story chaotic and challenging. Um, but the benefit of Natasha Denona palettes like this is you can pop the shades out and rearrange them. I like to keep them as they are intended with the names matching. I have like legitimately have OCD. And so that's just something that really bothers me. But the chaos of this doesn't bother me. They are beautiful. Um, I love her cream to powder formula and I'm really happy there's some in here. The blues are both her cream to powder formula and they are amazing. This light pastel blue because it's the cream to powder worked beautifully. Like it was, I used it the other day and I was like shocked at how pigmented it was. Um, these oranges are basically the same color, but like metallic and matte. Um, so you can do a nice monochromatic look with this green shade, which is a really unique yellow. And then like this aerial shade down here is one of the reasons I want, it's just such a pretty like silver lilac. Um, and I just love her formula, so I really wanted more colorful shades, and I am so happy I got this. I think, especially half off, or if you can get on sale, highly recommend. Plus then when, once you're in her ecosystem of shadows, you can rearrange and make your own custom palettes, which I want to start doing. I just need labels so that I can know what's what and put them all back where they belong at the end. The other palette from Natasha Denona that I've used a lot this year, this is probably my most used Natasha palette, is Zendo. And this one was controversial. A lot of people either loved it or hate it. My friend Steven hated this. <laughs> and I know Morgan Taylor just posted her worst of 2021 and included this. And But I love it. I This is my most used Natasha palette now. Um, I love bronze. I like lamb. But they're a little too monochromatic, a little too similar. Um, this gives me the variety that I crave. So Morgan t did say that the reason it was in the bottom of her favorites or like one of the worst things was the color story. And I have no problems with this color story. This color story inspires me so much. Um, it's got these cool tones right here. It's got warm tones, it's got neutrals. 
it's beautiful. The shimmers in this, I will say, are subtle. Um, they're not as high impact, but I don't. Natasha Denona's metallics and shimmers are nice, but they're not my favorite. Um, her mattes are really where, you know, it's worth it for me. Um, I definitely prefer the shimmers in a lot of the things I've already mentioned to these. Uh, but these are particularly like subtle, but I like that. I like having subtle shimmers, really high impact shimmers, really sparkly things. I like having both all of them because it depends on my mood, the situation. Uh, I use this a lot this summer um, for like a soft look where I wanted a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of shimmer on the eye, but I didn't want it to be like bam. And that's why I grabbed this a lot. The Zeal shade down here is really beautiful, especially on my skin tone. I had no issues with the cream to powder formula here that I know that Steven hated. <laughs> um, and I don't find the color story challenging. I think it just takes a little bit of thought and understanding basic color theory. Um, you can definitely mix warm and cool tones in the same look, but you can't necessarily blend them into each other. So like a light peachy matte or a light brown matte like this, you can definitely blend blues into a brown matte. Um, I would definitely put these with the peach. Um, or these with the green, or the peach with the green, but I wouldn't try to mix like the army olivey green with the red. Like that's gonna turn muddy and brown. Like you could use them in the same look and put one down here and one up here, but if you try and blend them together, they're gonna turn muddy because they're opposite ends of the color spec wheel. So you just have to think a little bit and I don't mind that. I am, I like to think. Uh, it is my job to think. <laughs> so I'm not, I, I, I love this. I think palettes that mix warm and cool tones and like these kind of tones with these like greeny blues, uh, I really love and they, they really speak to me because I, I, I don't like monochromatic things at all. I, I don't like monochromatic looks that much and I hate monochromatic palettes unless there's a good amount of variation um, between the tones. So. I, this is my kind of color story. So the next thing I want to mention is another warm and cool combo and why I want to mention them next to each other. And that is the Nomad Iceland palette. This is the Land of Fire and Ice. This was released in January. It was my first Nomad palette after wanting to buy stuff from them for a while. And I immediately fell in love. And once again, warm and cool tones. So I, Love blue. Blue is my favorite eyeshadow color and my favorite color. Um, I like green a lot, especially olive green, because it works well with my skin. But blue is where my, my heart is. Um, so these blues are really icy and really unique and beautiful. There's some really pretty duochromes in here. This elf shade is like a, a gray sage. It's, it's really pretty. It's got this beautiful row of warms. This is a really nice red shimmer. Um, it's got these like greeny, gray, neutrally kind of shades right here that are very earthy, um, especially this Gallows Lava. And then it's got these really fun duochrome pops over here that are just gorgeous, especially like I've definitely done days where I put one of these on the lid, mascara, and I just go for a sparkly ethereal thing. Beautiful. This is probably my favorite palette from Nomad. And I have seen this on other people's best of 2021 list. I'm not surprised. I think this is a beautiful curation and they did a great, she did a great job on this. I also could have mentioned the America's Parks palette from them. I love that. That was a go-to for me in the summer. Um, but I had to mention the Haunted Europe palette as one of the best things that came out this year. So everything else here I bought myself. This I got in PR. This was my first PR but it doesn't make me biased. I just, I think this is beautiful. Um, I have a video using this that I will link. I think the cover flipping is just a great idea. And I just think this is a really beautiful palette, especially this time of the year. You've got earthy fall tones, you've got cool tones, you've got blue, you've got like interesting browns and like, this is like a blood, dried blood shade. It fits with the theme very well. It was very well thought out. 
the the shades in this are some of the best mattes they've ever come out with the uh shimmers in this are all really special none of them are duochromes but they all have sparkles in them that are other colors like this mary cemetery shade is green but it has gold and blue and purple in it so it has bit flex from some of the other shimmers in it and they all kind of do so they just kind of melt into each other beautifully um and i love that i just i think this is gorgeous and just a, a fun theme for like a halloween -y palette i just without being halloween it's just i i just i love this um these are both small palettes from indie brands that i'm really happy i got this year the first is the Butte Bean and Shroud It's Frickin' Bats, or Batty Bean, as uh, she changed her name to. Um, this is beautiful. I didn't get it at the original launch at the start of the year. I got it recently, and it's great. The mattes in this are really lovely. They work really well. They're pigmented and they blend well. They are a weird formula. Like, they feel dry, but they don't feel dry when you use them, and it doesn't impact their blendability or anything. Like, Natasha and Donona, her mattes are creamy. Like, they feel silk, like, they don't feel silky, they feel creamy. Um, a lot of these, other, some of these other brands, they have, like, silky feeling mattes. Natasha's are creamy. These feel dry. Like, swatching them feels dry. But they still, they're pigmented, they blend easily, they look nice, they last all day. Like, there's no issues with them. So, it's just a textural thing. And then the shimmers in this are all beautiful. I don't have another shade like Sam here. Um, and then these duochromes are just beautiful. I really love this apparition, like purple gold duochrome. Um, I think this is such a fun, unique palette. I'm so happy I got this. I think this is totally worth the money. Batty Bean did a great job on this. I did drop mine, so it's got a little dent right there. But, um, and then, I wanted to mention the El Barrio palette from Terra Moons. So this look is Terra Moons. I have one of their new multi-chromes on my lid and then one on my inner corner. Um, I will link that. That's one of my recent videos. But this was their first and only palette um, and it's so beautiful. I love the El Barrio means neighbors, neighborhood. I love the embracing of Hispanic and Mexican-American culture that goes on in this. Um, you can't buy the palette anymore, but you still can get all of the shades individually. Um, and they're beautiful. These blues are gorgeous, really pigmented. Their mattes are really pigmented. This is a really nice red. Um, these are like my favorite of the shimmers in here, this like olive and this gold. I really like the orange here. I just don't go for reds very often. I go for more blue-green looks. Um, and then this Mijente shade is beautiful. It's like a gray-based green. So it kind of looks like a, it kind of looks like the eucalyptus shade from, I don't remember the name of it, but it's supposed to be a eucalyptus green from uh, Glaminatrix. It has that like eucalyptus -y shade to it. So it blends out kind of gray but it's so unique and so beautiful. And I hope they come out with more palettes because I love their singles. I just did a video with some, <laughs> um, but I like, I enjoy a palette. I like the curation that goes into it. Um, so I hope they do more because I love this. Um, so the last more mainstream brand that I want to mention, the last mainstream brand that I want to mention is Pat McGrath. So I got my first mothership for my birthday. I got Midnight Sun, loved it. And then during her big Black Friday sale, I ended up getting two more palettes for 50% off or 46% off or something like that. I don't know, it was basically buy one, get one free. And I got Utopian Dreams. And I don't know if this will be on a lot of people's best of 2021, but I am loving it so much. Um, so I don't have Divine Rose 1 or 2, so I understand the complaints of it being pinky tones, th like three years in a row, like three big palettes in a row of being pinky tones. 
I think those first two, especially Divine Rose 1, looks really boring to me, especially in person. I saw it at Sephora and I was like, yeah, no, I don't. Maybe on sale someday I'll get it to like complete all of them because there are some tones in there I like, but it doesn't really inspire me. Divine Rose 2 is really beautiful. Um, but this, so the whole controversy of she promoted it with all of these rainbows and sparkles and people were like, are we gonna get color from Pat McGrath? And then we didn't and people were mad. Taking all of that away and just looking at objectively the colors and shadows in it, it's beautiful and wonderful. Um, so it is right here. Um, these like dusty pink and this darker shade here are really pretty. I wish this was a little deeper personally, um, but I can reach for something else. But this coral mat is amazing. The multi-chrome in here is really beautiful right here. Um, the bronze shade right here and the duochrome right here, which is like peach pink, are really beautiful. I've been really in the mood for bronzes and I have three Pat McGrath, four Pat McGrath palettes with bronzes in them now. So <laughs> I've just been gravitating towards those, but this bronze shade is just so pretty. Um, there's been a lot of days where I just wore this with a matte brown uh, or the matte pink here. And then what really had me had to put this here is these two special shades. They are so pretty. I had like a sp spiritual experience when I swatched them the first time. This astral uh, Ven Venetian, Venusian rose is just so beautiful. And this uh, purpley blue one, I forget the name of at the moment, is also just so, pr this is my kind of shade. And I, I can't, I can't with these. They're just so pretty. I, they're sparkly, they're shifty, they're just so beautiful. Like this looks kind of magenta to me. And then I see that blue, I just, oh, and I'll swatch the bronze. They're, they're just so good. Um, especially on sale, worth every penny, but just her formulas are so good. And these, they're a little fall addy. They're the most flaky, but tapped over something. They just, they're like indie single level special and they're just so beautiful that I'm, I, I just, I just wanna keep staring at them and looking at them. <laughs> and then the other Pat palette that 1000% deserves to be here is the holiday palette. This is Celestial Odyssey and this is gorgeous. This was recently 40% off. So hopefully you got it if you wanted it because um, that was an amazing deal. This is normally, I think 70 bucks. So great price already for her quality and her shadows. I think this is a great way to try out her palettes. Um, it's one of the first ones I got. And this color story and the, the formula in this is just so good. Um, so it's 18 shades that are just smaller than the motherships, and they're so beautiful. This green is so unique. I think Lauren May just tried to dupe it, and had a hard time duping some of the shades from this. Like, she couldn't find quite the same green. Um, this blue, beautiful. I think the mattes in this are creamier than the mattes in the motherships I have. Um, not that those are bad mattes. I love the mattes in those. They're pigmented. They build really nicely. Um, these are creamier somehow, especially for a cheaper palette. And then some of the duochromes in here are just, this has some of those bronzes that I've been really wanting to use. And then this shade right here, I think it's Bronze Nova. Yeah, Bronze Nova is just this beautiful bronze pink duochrome that like, it's one of those shades where I have to stop myself from using it because I just want to keep using it every day. You can see that pink flip in there. It's so pretty. I wore that every day to work for like a week because I just couldn't, I just had to. Um, especially for an easy look, put the light brown on my crease, throw this on, mascara out the door, five minutes. I just, I love it. Amazing quality is, and then just a, such a good price too. And I, I hope next year's is even better than this. Okay, now that I've been rambling for a half an hour, I've just got a couple things left. Um, so 
I finally tried Sigil Inspired by Tammy Tanuka this year, and I now have like eight, seven palettes, I don't know, and then a handful of singles. But I did want to point out the ones that came out this year. I think Flaming Gold might have come out this year. It was at the beginning of the year. I'm not 100% sure. The Mist palette came out this year, and that is beautiful, but I didn't grab it. But earlier this year, she came out with the Gazelle, which I have the mini of. I wish I had the full size. <laughs> and this is, for anybody like me that's an olive or loves olive cut tones, this is perfect. So you can see how little it is as a mini. It's got two mattes. It's got like this light olive beige and then an olive green. They're beautiful. They are, I would say, the same quality as Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona. Um, not as creamy as Natasha, so more Pat like in formula. And then these shimmers are all like bronze olive, pink olive, uh, like they're looking, that looks green on camera, but when I look at it, I see pink. And then this blue is like blue, pink, gold. It's described as the color of the morning sun or the morning sky, and it really is. And it is gorgeous. I wish I had, I wish I was able to get the full size of this, but it sold out before I got it. And... I'm at least happy to have the little one, but this is like my ideal neutral palette um, slash daily palette. So love this. And then her two newest palettes are the Playful S Grass Snake and the Languid Chestnut Toad. And I, I love these, especially the Toad. Um, I think they work really well together. I have videos on both of these. Actually, I have videos on all three of these but they're just so beautiful. So this is my idea of a monochromatic palette. Um, like these are both, this isn't showing up green, but it is green. It's a green bronze duochrome. This is a multi-chrome. These are like green. This is like a green blue. This is my ideal of, idea of a, multi, of a monochromatic palette. And then this is just a beautiful chestnut toad palette. <laughs> it's got, green bronze but like very different from this one it's more muted and earthy it's got an earthy brown it's got like an earthy red burgundy it's got another multi-chrome here it's just the quality of these is so good i i know i keep mentioning them in like all the time lately and i have so many videos on them but it's just because they're so good like i wish they were cheaper to get and shipping was less because i love them so much it is easily top couple brands now and formula wise it's the quality of pat mcgrath but with like russian fairy tale and animal vibes and i'm here for it okay so the last two brands and palettes are the melt hallway palette um i have a video up on this as well this is the amori mariposas um love and butterflies I think this is my second melt palette and the better of the two. This is beautiful. I love the detail. And you'll see if you watch my other video, um, there's some melt in that as well. And it's just beautiful. So these, this half, the whole lower half is pressed pigments. The top half is eyeshadows. So these are technically not intended for the eye use um, because of the vegan reds and purples in them but I used them anyway. And the part of that problem is that they can stain. I didn't have a problem with any of these staining. I've used all of these shades down here and I did not have any staining. And these were some of the most pigmented matte shades I've ever used. Uh, the greens are beautiful and have really interesting undertones. Um, the neutrals are really nice. This yellow is really beautiful. But then these dark red and purple shades are just so beautiful. They work so well. They're maybe the most pigmented shades I've ever used <laughs> and or up there, uh, but they still blended beautifully and looked great. And I just can't stop praising this. This is so good. And I know they're an inconsistent brand. Like people have problems with some not being great quality. This is great quality. And if they keep coming out with this quality, I will buy more. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to mention is Kaleidos. So Kaleidos is one of my other favorite brands and they released lips, which you'll see in another video um, if you watched yesterday's. 
And they released two palettes this year. Um, I have most of their palettes now, and I wish I had them all. Um, this spring, summer time, they released the Flower Punk. And this is beautiful. I, and, uh, I am obsessed with the aesthetics of this. Um, this is the color story, if you haven't already seen it. It's beautiful, I love it. This sun gear shade here is probably the most intense and most beautiful olive-y metallic I have. It's like olive, but also lime. It's, it's so beautiful. Um, it's such an interesting mix of colors too. I think Kaleidos does that really well. Same with Odin's Eye and Sigil. Um, it's just so beautiful. You can do, you know, soft and pinky right here. Um, I've definitely used Aloe Cove as a little inner corner pop quite a few times where I just did nothing but mascara and Aloe Cove right here. And then these are just so beautiful. I know some people like Teresa's dad said that these looked the same on her, but I don't know if it's just because she's really fair skinned and pink undertoned ish, but like on me, these made a beautiful gradient and I love them. I have used this so much. I'll put that shadow right here next to the pat shape. You can just see how shiny that is. It's so beautiful. And then last but not least is from the very beginning of the year was their collaboration with Angelica Nyquist and it is the Club Nebula. And this might be, I don't know, the Melt palette is up there and the Pat Holiday palette are up there in like favorites, especially the, and the Sigil Chestnut Toad. But this might be my favorite palette of 2021. I had to stop myself from using it all the time for a while. And now that the weather's turned, I really want to use it more. This is beautiful. I'm so sad it was limited edition and you can't get it anymore. I kind of wish I had a backup, but I, I don't need it. Um, <laughs> but it's it's gorgeous. These are some of the best dark mattes that I have in my collection, I think, or the best. Um, the color story really speaks to me, this mix of greens and blues and then reds and peaches. Um, just really, really speak to me. If you couldn't already tell from Zendo and the Nomad Iceland palette, I, I love this. And then it has, the sh most of the shimmers in here are like an iridescent topper, like an iridescent duochrome or multichrome. And they're just gorgeous. They really transform your look. Um, this green shade is probably the best bright lime green I have. It's, you can go neutral um, with like these cool purpley tone shades right here. Um, you can go red, you can go peach, you can go per blue, green. It's it's so good. I think she killed it with this. I share her love of dark matte shades. I also appreciate that she did light to dark. She has light to dark shimmers. Like it's, this is it. Almost everything I want in the palette. Um, and I, I love this, I think. Yeah, I think this is probably my favorite palette from the year. Um, the quality is just beautiful. It's just so good. Um, I love Kaleidos. They're also up here with like Sigil and Odin's Eye and Lethal. Like they're all up here and no matter, like this is basically just a list of also all of my favorite brands. So um, my favorite things from my favorite brands is what I could also call this. So let me know, I know this was a lot and I just rambled on for like 40 minutes, but let me know what you think, what were your favorite eyeshadow palettes of the year? I tried a lot, I tried more than this. I also tried more from past years. Um, <laughs> tried a lot of eyeshadow this year, but let me know if you have any of these, if you love these, what your favorite maybe top couple palettes are of the year, um, I'd love to know. Um, especially if you don't have a YouTube channel and you're not making a video with your favorites. Um, I'd like to know what your favorite couple pals were of the year. Um, I find that really fascinating. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.